possible season interest. This is these are all perennials. All very easy to grow. Um, this is a part shade, full sun plant. Um, can anybody tell me why it's blue still? <laughs> That's why I love when I, we, we have a little kid for it. I was like, man, they tell me why it's blue star now, like, get this puzzled look, and I'm like, it's a blue star, why are you asking me that? <laughs> <laughs> um, dwarf crescent iris, very small, and we're getting to our ground covers now. Um, this is, um, uh, I would say, full shade. Um, it can take sun, but not afternoon sun. It can take a little bit of morning sun. It's it about six inches tall. So uh, very short, short iris. Um, and it does form a very nice ground cover. Uh, no, and is that perennial? <laughs> yeah, it's an iris. It's perennial. It's spread. It spreads, but spreads slowly. I wish it spread faster. Do <laughs> you yeah. like it? No. I only have one problem, one plant that have, pro well actually two plants, um, the wild geranium, the deer is destroyed every year. Um, and then the hydrangeas, they'll come and get the hydrangeas. Um, okay, wild ginger. It is uh, full shade, um, like again, ground cover, cover, forms a nice little clump, and then it gets this nice little I like to call it a hidden flower. It's a great one to show when you're giving forward in the garden. It has a little round uh, maroon flower at the bottom of it. It's about six inches tall. Real nice foliage for a ground cover. Now, yeah, is that um, oh, the ginger? Is that any kind of ginger that you can eat? Yeah. Okay. Yes. You can eat it, but it's not the ginger you're thinking of. Okay. It's not the Asiatic. It's not the Asian variety. Okay. Okay. All right, now we're getting into the uh, spring ephemerals, um, the short-lived spring plants, the really cool stuff you'll find in, in, out in nature. Uh, it's a late dropping trillium. Uh, we actually have 10 different trilliums in the garden, but this is the one that's most prevalent. Um, great molted green and uh, light green foliage. It has that little uh, purple flower on the top. It's about six to 10 inches tall. It forms these little colonies like this. Go ahead, Nancy. Bloodroot. Um, this is, again, another spring ephemeral. It's only out a few days. No, they'll flower for a few days, but they'll be, you'll see the leaves out for a couple of weeks. Um, one of the first things you'll see in the woods, which is kind of cool because you'll kind of, you'll walk into the garden, and then they'll just see this bright green with this little white flower out of it, because everything else will be dormant. Um, blood root, it's called blood root because of the red root. Um, the Native Americans used to use it as a face paint um, or dye for stuff. Um, it's also used in medical, kind of, not medical, but you know. Herbal. Herbal, Herbal. thank you. <laughs> I try not to get into that stuff because like, can I use it? Like, I don't know because I don't, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's for female problems, so I definitely don't use it. Dutchman's breeches, breeches, pantaloons, I wish they would have called it. Uh, really cool little flower, it has some partially light leaves on it, gets about 6 to 12 inches tall, and then it shoots this pantacle of little white pantaloon flowers on it. Short-lived. Short-lived, spring ephemeral. Yes. Alright. And the last one, <laughs> trout lily. Um, one of my favorite little spring ephemerals. Um, you'll see the leaves a couple weeks before you'll actually see the flower, and the flower will come out. Um, if you are a fly fisherman, that little cat is there at the bottom. When you see trout lily, use that fly. <laughs> <laughs> it works, it's nature. Uh, all right, next one. All right, now we wrapped up. We've gone through the plants. We know what a native plant is and why to use them. Everybody feel comfortable about that? Next one. All right, there's the big word. Um, the thing I want everyone to know is the connections. There's the connections between all these. From top to bottom. 
I've got an extra one. All right, here we go. This little baby Tom, I actually watched this guy grow up over the past year. Um, there's him in our nursery area. Um, this is this is ten minutes before I started trying to chase him out of the fence area. <laughs> yeah, they don't like to listen. And then mom was on the other side of the fence. Oh. And the red fox. Um, I haven't seen that guy since until 21 feet. But that's in our uh, maintenance log. Squirrels, critters, groundhogs, squirrels, turtles, raccoons, turtle mating season in this picture. <laughs> 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 is, every year I almost kick one, I feel bad. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but <laughs> it's in the spring and they just come out of nowhere. Um, all the birds, little bluebirds, uh, robins. We do have a resident red shoulder hawk on property. Um, it comes back every year and <coughs> has little uh, hawklings. What's the correct term for that? Huh? <laughs> Baby hawks? Chicks. Chicks? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I figured this group might put out a lot <laughs> Alright, next slide. And then we're getting into butterflies and bees. You can see we're getting smaller. The zebra swallow tail and monarch. <coughs> oh, what's this? Cecropia? What is it? Cecropia. Cecropia? Okay. I'm going to go with Cecropia. <laughs> <laughs> There's like three of them that look exactly the same. I can't remember them. <laughs> Alright, guys. Next one. Alright. Spice Bush. Monarch. Dutchman breaches. Caterpillar in the middle there. That's a uh, hornworm. And that bottom right I want to point out. Bill and Emily were out. Everybody here knows Bill and Emily, right? <laughs> they were out on the property and I'm like, well, you gotta come check this out. And I've been walking past this way for ash all day. And I thought it was a bird poop on there. <laughs> they're like, they're killing her. I was like, they're all over. There was like six of them. That's a giant uh, swallowtail caterpillar. Kind of <laughs> and insects, of course, the uh, stick bugs. Uh, Bees. Oh, crane manners. It's all over the place. What's the red snapshot? That is uh, box elder bugs. Oh. Which are pretty terrible, but they don't actually do it much longer. Alright, next Alright, we're getting smaller. We've got the moss. And these are all just generic definitions. I don't know how many uh, photographers or picture takers we have in the crowd, but the fungus can really make for a good picture sometimes. <laughs> Especially when it's caught at the right angle. And the lichens. Um, I went to a talk a while back on Alabama. They're actually doing a study on lichens, and I didn't know anything about it. And it's a, it's a combination of algae and uh, bacteria growing on fungus. There's millions and millions of lichens, um, which makes it really cool because there's, if you get a microscope, microscope, you get up close on these things, they have all different structures. So there's just so many different types of lichens. Again, it also makes pretty cool pictures if you don't have anything else to take pictures of. Uh, but it's said if you have a lot of lichens, then you have very good air quality. But something interesting to look into if you if you find a need to use them. Alright, next one. And here's our other big one. Evolutionary biology. Again, I'm not a scientist, but just words that have been coming out the past couple of years. Um, so I want to relate this is the monarch. Um, the monarch has an evolutionary biology with milkweed. It needs it to continue to be around. Um, these insects have grown up eating and living and growing on these native plants. They evolved to grow on these native plants. That's the reason why you see kudzu and privet and all this other stuff everywhere. It doesn't have anything else to eat. Nothing to eat. Nothing's controlling it. And this is the reason why we haven't we've seen a decline in the monarch because people aren't planting 
the milkweed or are they getting rid of it by destroying property. So, there's one of those big words. I can't really get too far into it because, again, I don't have a PhD or anything, but it's one of those things <laughs> I think people should know. <laughs> Alright, next slide. Alright, let's bring it home. The purpose of the is during the legacy of future generations through education, preservation, history, and heritage, and the beauty of Northwest Arkansas. There's a uh, top left is uh, one of our master gardeners at Ari Baker. We're doing seed planting. Uh, bottom right is uh, one of our field trips from one of the Springdale schools. And then you see Hopsville and, and the crazy baby who's been beating me up all, all morning today. <laughs> Oh, good. Where is Gardner? Uh, I don't know. 
the book that also okay. says in that book that it's not a strictly a native plant book, but it's a mixture of exotic and native plants. Uh, the new one? The, the new one. Okay. That she's talking about. Yeah. But I just wanted to oh, mention fine. that, but it's still a wonderful book. Well, I'm gonna. I'm, yeah, it's one of those ones I gotta read. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or? Uh, uh, <laughs> you express your sale or not. Folks uh, are interested in native plants. I suggest you go to their sale. You will find a wide variety, and you can get about any plant that is native around here that you want. It's just outstanding. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to go down to Common Arkansas, probably get a good variety. That's you're going to have right with it. Yeah, um, so the native plant sale. Oh, man. The, the native plant sale. Um, it's native plants and shrubs, trees and shrubs. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so the perennials are five, ferns are eight, and then trees are only ten dollars. They're not very big trees, but they're for the trees. I don't. I'm, I haven't done the whole inventory yet. Right now, I've I've done counting, and we're at like five thousand plants. So. What is the location of your plant sale? 312 North Main Street, Bentonville, Arkansas. Oh, it's right there. It's right there. Who supplies no, them? Who grows them? Excuse me? Who supplies your plants? Do you grow them? Uh, half, my majority of them I grow or propagate from the garden. Okay. And then stuff that I can't get up quick enough or it's very difficult for us to do, we bring in. But a lot of times we're bringing in native plants. We're not making that much of a profit on it. We're just, we're non profit. Okay. So. Just educate. Yes, we're trying to get native plants in people's yards. What time? Okay, you raised your hand like eight times. I'm sorry. <laughs> the same question. Yeah, we propagate. So every year we collect seed, and then we have a greenhouse and a nursery. Um, last week we actually started up sizing plants. And it's kind of funny cause of what we have, because a couple years ago only the foxglove pensamins came up, so I had like a couple hundred of them. And then this year it's been great. but. Every one of the yellow cone flowers come up, so I have over 400 yellow cone flowers. <laughs> 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 like, Time. Time? I think, it, I think it's 8 to 2. Okay. I haven't put out the information on it yet. But. So, right. Is there a website with anything? Peelcompton.org. Peelcompton.org. This plant sale, no, what would be other good sources of native plants? Uh, Missouri Wildflower Nursery and Pine Ridge Nursery are the two that I go with around here. Uh, Holland Green uh, Wildflower Farm out of Elkins, is it? Holland? Pollen. Well, they don't advertise much, but they've got quite a bit. Right. Um, I really like this girl. <laughs> I can't hear you. Another man that sells woody plants like paw paw and what, spice bush. What was, it, what was the name of it? Wild Street. Wild Street. The Garden. Fayetteville Farmer's Market. Okay. And There's a new one. She contacted me. It was Ozark Native Plants. Yeah. Wild Street. Yeah. 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 She's out of uh, St. Paul? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know about that one. Okay. I yeah. thought it was the same one. No, it's this one. Okay. But they'll, they'll be there in April. Any garden questions? <laughs> what do you got? Hello. Okay. Great. Uh, New England sky, sky blues are some of my favorites. Um, their asses are great because they bloom later in the year. Um, and the, the butterflies actually love them. So. You sell seeds? Do not sell seeds. Sorry. We can't, it's not good enough to sell. I mean, especially me and the guys in yeah. a bucket and we're trying to. <laughs> We've cleaned a lot of seeds the past couple of weeks. Um, any, any questions on the training? I'll get more information you guys about that.
Um, the one other thing that I think this group would be really interested in, and probably that some of you guys know, um, Ralph Weber had came out to the garden last year and we plotted over 70 trees in the garden, GPS them. So um, beginning of March, we're going to have a, hopefully, I'm just in the final editing process, an actual brochure guide where you can come out and GPS each tree, go to each tree, 70 different species. So, it'll help you come out. You guys come out to the garden, hide each tree, and then go out and the hogs are figuring them out. You mentioned the yellowwood in the corner, champion tree. What's the other one? The other champion tree is the Chinese American hybrid chestnut. So, the American chestnut um, got wiped out by the blight. And then um, one of the professors, I can't remember the name, at the university, um, was trying to hybridize them. So we get that American chestnut back. Um, and he actually gets Dr. Thompson one. What do you do to get, do you germinate pawpaws? Germinate pawpaws? Yeah. 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 We collect the seed. Uh, they have, they need a cold shot. They need what? Cold shot. Cold stratification. Oh. They need to be in cold, moist soil for a couple months. And that's why you don't have to scarify them. They're pretty soft. But 